I'm another one of those academic types. Um, unlike the first two presentations today, mine is a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> As you can tell from the title. Um, I want to take you on a, on a long walk to church from southeastern Spain up to northwestern Spain. Sometimes I'll have some anecdotes, some um, stories. Other times I'm just going to let the picture let the pictures talk to you. Okay? And then if you have any questions afterwards, um, feel free. Uh, it came up earlier. Um, the Mosada base. Um, this is kind of an important term when we're talking about Camino Mosarabe. So, what exactly is the Camino Mosarabe? Um, I confess I made the mistake of trying to make medieval history fit the contemporary Camino. I wanted medieval history to fit the contemporary Camino. But as with so many things medieval, the infinite variety in those many centuries quickly drove home with a sledgehammer the folly of my intent. <laughs> Here, you can see for yourselves a little bit of medieval history. As Mary Jane mentioned earlier, the Mosarabes were Arabized Christians who lived in al -Andalus, the Iberian territory occupied and controlled by the Moors, the Arabs and Berbers, who had invaded and conquered most of the Iberian Peninsula in the early 700s. By the year 1030, when pilgrims had been traveling to Santiago de Compostela for about 200 years, the political map of the Iberian Peninsula looked like that. Most Arabes lived throughout all that green territory. So those who walked from Toledo and Zaragoza and Tarragona and Valencia and Lisboa and Sevilla, they all walked the Camino Mozarabe, right? Uh, well, it depends. Yes and no. Yes, by the logic of medieval history. No, according to our contemporary Camino designations. They walked the Camino the Levante, and the Ebro, and the Camino Catalan, and the Portugues, and the Via de la Plata. So let's go back to square one. What is the Camino Mozarabe? For our purposes, the Camino Mozarabe is a set of routes that pass through eastern Andalusia. The modern starting points are Almeria, Malaga, and Jaén. They converge at Alcaudete and Baena, and then continue on to Cordoba and then to Merida, where they merge with, but also continue on the Via de la Plata. The Camino Mozarabe then splits off from the Via de la Plata at Zamora, or at Granja de Moreduela, or at Astorga. There, um, continuing on to Santiago de Compostela. What I've gone and done for the purposes of this presentation um, is to divide the Camino Mozarabe into several big segments. Okay? I hope it makes it a bit easier to take in. Going um, from Almeria and Malaga and Jaén to Córdoba. This is a walk through 800 years of Hispano-Muslim culture. From Córdoba to Mérida, which is a lot of rural walking. <laughs> From Mérida to Zamora. This is a walk through 2,000 years of Hispano-Roman culture, as well as Visigothic, and then Medieval, and then Renaissance and Baroque. From Zamora to Astorga, um, we could call it the historical Via de la Plata. Um, I'm not going to talk about that because, really, 
you get off at Astorga and you get onto the Camino Frantes and if you've walked the Camino Frantes, you know that already. And if you haven't walked it yet, I'm going to leave it to you because that's probably going to be your first Camino. Okay? There is also the Camino um, San Abres. Um, this goes from just north of Zamora to Santiago, to Orense, to Santiago. I have walked. I'm not going to talk about it. I know it's beautiful, but don't know enough. What I do know about is the one that's just a little bit to the south of that. And this is the route, it's called the Samorano Portugues, um, Camino Portugues de la Via de la Plata, known by different names. It goes from Zamora and it crosses through the northwestern corner of Portugal before emerging back into Spain and going to Orense. It's kind of special. In each segment, I want to show you what delights me about this Camino Mozarabe. The cityscapes, the countryscapes, they are just magical. The artistic, architectural, literary, cultural record. The World Heritage Sites, and there are a lot of them. The lodging, the waymarking, some of the APOC connections, and occasionally, a little bit of good food. <laughs> little bit of good food. Okay. First from Admitia. A note on waymarking. Okay? You should not get lost on this route unless you want to. <laughs> And that may not be a bad thing when you think about it. Okay? Um, these are um, some of the typical um, um, signs and mojones that mark the route um, out of Almeria, um, out of Jaén, out of Malaga. Please note the one on the far right. That is one that was financed by Grand by American. Now, a note on the length of, of the etapas, the, the daily walk. How many of you have already walked the meseta on the Camino Frantes? Okay. Do you remember the walk out of Carrion de los Condes? That's 17 kilometers of flat, straight, dirt path with no services, yeah. no towns. Okay. There may have been a mobile um, uh, trailer with somebody who had food and drink parked along the way. Mm -hmm. 17 kilometers. On the Camino Mozarabe, there are more than 20 etapas of more than 17 kilometers with no towns, no services, sometimes no fountains. The two crown jewels both occur a few days after Cordoba. It's 34 kilometers of rural walking from Villarta to Alcaracejos. And then a short day, and then the next day, it's 32 kilometers from Hinojosa del Duque to Monterrubia, Monterrubio de la Serena. These etapas are not flat, and they are not straight. Some of them don't have water fountains. Walking this Camino does take planning, um, carrying food and water, protective clothing, uh, sunscreen, and uh, first aid as well. Okay, so cityscapes and countryscapes. Hmm? The Camino Mozarabe, this branch begins in Alderia. Hmm? Beautiful city on the southern coast of Spain. Um, long history. Um, very, very important city during the, um, the, uh, the Muslim um, occupation of Spain. In a small town, a little bit up, Albolodui, there's um, uh, an albergue 
that is right next door to the medical consultorium. Um, and its interior was funded by a grant from American Dolphins. If you have any um, memory of Spanish literature um, in school, one of the classics of Golden Age theater is Peribanas y el Comendador de Ocaña by Lope de Vega. Ocaña is a town on this route. And in Ocaña, they have, they have the townspeople have revived to play and perform it every year. Um, wow. um, a, couple, a couple interesting um, countryside views. Some of you may recognize Calahorra Castle. The Camino walks right past this. And then in Guadix, um, there are the, the cave houses, um, which look a little bit different on the outside, um, but on the inside they're beautiful. The jewel in this, um, this etapa is, of course, Granada. There are those who say that if you have one day to spend in Spain, spend it in Granada. I have to agree. UNESCO World Heritage, there are three sites in Granada. Of course, the Alhambra. The Gardens of the Generalife. And the Albaicín. Part of the landscape in this part of Spain, increasingly around Granada, are the olivares, the olive groves. We walk through a lot of olive groves. There are there are lots of towns. There really are. They have um, they have a similar look to them. This is Moclin. Um, typically, on a hill, you have a castle, and then a whitewashed town um, underneath. And then, of course, there are olive groves. I'm going to take a quick skip over to Malaga and, and come up um, to, the, to the main route. Okay? Malaga, again, beautiful city on the south coast. Countryside is stunning. Lots and lots of bare rock formations that you get to walk through. Antequera city um, on the way is also a World Heritage site, but not for reasons of the Romans or the Moors, rather prehistoric reasons. The Dolmen de Mengat, this is the entrance to it, and this is the inside of it. And again, really nice way marking. <laughs> Let's take a little hop again up to Chaim. Um, Chaim's Cathedral is not a current UNESCO World Heritage Site, but it's a tentative site. It's been proposed as um, an extension of the Ubeda uh, Paeza Renaissance and uh, Renaissance architectural ensemble. Um, this is a very, very short um, route from Chaim to the, to, the main, um, to the main road. Um, it's two days. Overnight is in Martos, again, an albergue um, that has been funded in part by a grant. They don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, the olive groves are so much a part of the culture and history of southern Spain that they also have been proposed as a World Heritage uh, Site. <laughs> you all know Corpola, right? Or at least about it. This is the Roman bridge going into Cordoba. 
with the cathedral in the mosque in the background. <laughs> Cordoba has four separate World Heritage sites, more than any other city in the world. One is, of course, the mosque. The mosque is a beautiful thing. It has an unfortunate appendix, uh, which is a cathedral that was erected in the middle of it after Cordoba, after Cordoba was reconquered. Um, and you can see the main altar, and then you can still see the horseshoe arches um, on the side. In addition to the uh, Mesquita, the Alcázar de los Reyes Católicos, the city of Medina Apara, which was um, built during the latter part of Cordoba's um, uh, second part the, when, when Cordoba was the capital of Alacruz. Okay. And then in a part of intangible heritage, which is the Festival de los Patios that happens every May um, in Cordoba. From Cordoba to Merida, this segment of the Camino is characterized by some of the most solitary etapas of any Camino, through a very rural rant or landscape. This is not touristic Andalusia. After Cordoba, you've left that behind. This is a span that, if you are not a pilgrim, you may never encounter. So let's take a closer look. During this part, during this segment, we leave Andalusia and enter into Extremadura. From Monte Rubio, you can, you can leave the marked route and add a few kilometers, but walk through a city that may ring a bell, Falamea. Um, Falamea is it's kind of important for, for a couple different reasons. First, um, there's the, a burial ground um, that's been excavated that dates back to 500 years BC. Um, it's um, part of the ancient civilization of Tartes. Okay. Also, in um, Salamea, um, Antonio de Nebrija published the very first grammar of the Castilian language. 1492, one of the four watermark events of that year in Spain. And this Falamea may have been the site of the historical events that inspired Calderón de la Barca to write the play El Alcalde de Falamea. Okay. If you get back on the track, one of the next stops is Medellín with a Roman theater of its own. And also the Plaza de Hernán Cortés, uh, Cortés. This is where he was from. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you all know him as the conquistador of the Aztecs in Mexico. <clears throat> this is a delightful walk from Medina to Zamora. How many of you have walked the Via de la Plata? Okay. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Via de la Plata is, is really, really interesting. Um, it's not very populated in, in terms of pilgrims. Um, so you, um, you get to see all sorts of really, really great stuff, um, but you're not in a flood of pilgrims. Entering Merida, um, we do not get to cross this bridge. This is for the people coming up from Shredi. Hmm? But we get to walk past it, okay? <laughs> Merida is also a World Heritage Site for its archaeological ensemble of 22 different monuments. Um, a couple of them, the theater, there's a necropolis, an mm. amphitheater, the Ark of Trajan, the bridge which you just saw, uh, two aqueducts, uh, Proserpina Dam, uh, 
um, which created a reservoir that brought fresh water to the city during the Roman times, and 14 other monuments. Interestingly, too, the route from, um, from Merida to Astorga is also um, down as a tentative World Heritage Site, the entire route. One of the first um, overnights after Merida is in the little is in the town of Alcuesta. Um, the albergue is in that white building behind. Um, it is a traditional type of albergue situation. Um, community dinner, you get to help with the dishes after dinner. Um, and the familiar community. <laughs> Santa Lucia del Trampano. That's its floor plan. The, the ones that are filled in in gray, that's what's still standing. Okay. And that's on the inside. That's the, that's the crossing right in the middle. and you get to Santiago, almost, you get to La Bacoya, and you got to do that little detour around the, the airport runway. There's a little airport here on this one, too. You're supposed to walk around it. Nobody does. You get to the runway, you look left, you look right, no airplanes, cross. And soon after this, we get to enter the beautiful, beautiful city of Cáceres. Also a World Heritage Site. The city's history being reflected um, in its architectural blend of Roman, Islamic, Gothic, and Italian Renaissance styles manifested in its churches, its convents, the solares, the family palaces, um, towers, and other popular architecture. Just past Cáceres something that has a different appeal. The little town of Casada de Cáceres. De That's the walk through. But the real appeal is this. <laughs> Torta del Casar. Cheese. It is unique. It's a rind cheese. And when it's done right, and you open it up on the inside, it's liquid. <laughs> and you get to spoon it out onto your bread, onto whatever you're doing. Oh, it is open. <laughs> okay, countryside. Back in the time of the Romans, um, the Romans marked distances on their Roman roads with miliarios. These were usually, these were placed one Roman mile apart. Okay? Um, since Spanish farmers don't really need miliarios, they tend to collect them and put them in miliario graveyards. <laughs> Just out of the way, out of the fields, uh, and there they sit, now, today. Um, some of them are still standing, thank goodness. Instead of miliarios, we use these way marks on a good part of the Via de la Plata. Um, it's a concrete block. Okay. And it's got a, 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 a colored panel. The yellow shows going on the Camino, the blue shows going on the Roman road, uh, the Roman Via de la Plata, and when you got them both together, they coincide. That is a typical view of the, of the trail. Every now and then you have to cross um, somebody's land. Uh, they may have a gate just asking you to close the gate behind me. And then, that's why. <laughs> the, um, the monument that um, is a symbol of the Via de la Plata is the arch at Capra. And then the countryside, it just takes you, it takes you to another time and another world. That's a new mediano. Okay. It's 
been uh, put up for the Camino de Santiago um, for pilgrims. And Camino Mozarabe, no, in Spanish and then in Arabic as well. Just before Salamanca, there's a little town. It's kind of special too. It's Fuente Roble de Salvatierra. Dusty little town. If you stop for food before you get to the albergue and you ask for a local specialty, they may serve you mojarra. It looks great, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> no, I will. It takes out. Stew. The flavor is great. But if you have texture issues, <laughs> this is the albergue. It's, um, it's a parish albergue. Run by Don Blas, the parish priest. This was the very first albergue to which American pilgrims gave a grant before the grant program began. This was back in 2008-2009. Remember, Daniel Decay is here somewhere. Um, he proposed this as something American pilgrims should do, get into directly supporting the infrastructure. The board at the time agreed. American pilgrims cut a $10,000 check to Don Blas, and Daniel carried it with him to Don Blas at the albergue and presented it to him. And from what Daniel says, the expression on his face was simply priceless. Um, yeah. And ever since, because of the success of that, the idea of the grants program grew and has grown to what it is today, which is one of the great successes of American buildings. Mm -hmm. The Albergue is really a little place, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entering Salamanca, you got the Roman Bridge, and then both the Romanesque and the Gothic Cathedral in the back. <coughs> Salamanca is the setting of one of the um, favorite scene, uh, favorite segments of the book Lazarillo de Torres, um, and that's in, in, uh, memorialized here, okay? along with the other character from that segment of the book, that chapter of the book, which is the stone bull, and that's there too. Both of these are on that bridge. Salamanca, World Heritage Site, University, the Roman Bridge, the Plaza Mayor, um, the Old Cathedral, the New Cathedral, the different churches, Brown Church, right in the middle of the city, right in the middle of the commercial part of the city. And you walk in and it's as if the city doesn't exist. There's one thing that is not a UNESCO World Heritage Site, be it material or immaterial, but it should be. <laughs> <laughs> they say that the best Castilian hams are from Quijuelo. Quijuelo is a small town right by Fuente Roble, just to the south of Salamanca, and it is really, really good. This is the countryside. This is the countryside after Salamanca on the way to somewhere. <laughs> Two, three days of this. And then in Zamora, as you might guess, the Roman Bridge and the very unique cathedral. Okay, just got a break. Like I said, out of Zamora, there are three routes. I'm not going to talk about two of them, but I hope you enjoy the third one. Okay? This is Zamora through Portugal to Orense. The very first stop is in the little, little town of El Campillo to see this beautiful, again, Visigothic church. 
Um, it dates from the seventh century. It um, was not originally in this place. It was actually way down closer to the river, but when um, the government um, dammed up the river to create a reservoir, the church was dismantled block by block and reassembled right there. That's its floor plan. And that's what the interior does look like right now. The way markers here are really, really cool as well. This is all the way from Samora to the Portuguese border. The countryside, I couldn't ask for anything more beautiful. It is relatively depopulated. And when we walked, this was in late May, the flowers were just There is a grocery station, a, a grocery and a, a gasoline station, just before getting to Portugal. It has everything the pilgrim needs. <laughs> what else? At the border, um, the border, um, we cross it on a bridge, and this marks from Spain passing into Portugal. In Portugal, things are a little different. The way marking is generally good, but there are places where you don't see a way mark for a while, like this. I looked at that slide and I was trying to remember what it was, and it wasn't registering because you can't really tell that there's supposed to be a path there. Um, people don't want this route. I don't, I don't know why, but, but they just don't. We, we must have been the first people walking through in more than a week because nothing was trampled down. We were just walking through the grass. Why use a bridge? <laughs> and the, the progression of overnights um, for um, three nights in Portugal is from city, Braganza, to town, Vinhais, to Hamlet, Edral, where you sleep in the community social center. There is no Albergue. Mm -hmm. And again, well, sometimes road signs work just as well as way markers. Now we're looking back at what we had walked. <laughs> Passing back into Spain, um, things are a little bit more developed um, almost immediately. And, oops, my bad. Um, we have a uh, lot of routes here. Ruta de uh, do Contrabando, the old um, contrabandist uh, escape walks um, in the countryside. Um, this is the first town in Spain, more the countryside. Again, not really a path. You know how when you're walking in Spain, you come to a church, it looks interesting, you want to go inside and it's locked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How this one? <laughs> <laughs> they left the key in the front door lock. Anybody who wants to go in could. The city of Verín marks the end of this, this part of the walk. Um, and here we're back to um, the city. It's a beautiful place. It's got a nice center, and their albergue is in that building. Verín is right in the middle of the Monterrey um, vineyard area. And we are back to some long, straight walking paths. We go from big city to big city, Shinsu, Virginia. 
through a countryside complete with oak trees and moss-covered stones on the paths to the town of Ayarith, where, if you're lucky, you may just get there on a festival day. <laughs> um, okay. So, Orense to Santiago. This is perhaps the most beautiful and unspoiled um, of the final hundred kilometer segments of any of the Caminos. Interestingly enough, only 2.6% of the Compostelas that are given out in Santiago go to people who walk this route. 2.65%, that's all. That's including everybody who started in Sevilla or Granada or Orense. That's not many. <coughs> And unlike the other pilgrimage routes, the population of pilgrims on this route has been dropping every year for the past 10 years. Not including, this is not including um, uh, COVID. This is up to COVID. This is the portal not of, of course, the Cathedral in Santiago, but what the Cathedral in Santiago is or uh, Portico de la Gloria may have looked like when it was painted. This is on the cathedral in Orense. Orense has great architecture. New bridge, old bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting to get into the albergue. Nice albergue on the inside. Nice, comfortable. Shortly after Orense, we come to one of the highlights gastronomically, which is the town of Fea. And the only D.O. bread in all of Spain, Pan de Fea. It is really good. Alison Smith can tell you all about Pan de Fea. She has researched it in person. And she's here. All you got to do is look her up. Shortly after Seon, you get uh, you got to make a choice: <laughs> go down the Camino Straight or take a desviación, a, a detour to the monastery at Poseda, where you can stay overnight. The monastery is imposing. The sleeping, it's kind of cramped. When we were there, it was cold, <laughs> but it was great. And there's one bar in town, so you go there to get your food. People, the, the woman who was there, she was very, very accommodating. Um, she even fixed us things that weren't on the menu. The way marking can be mm, whimsical. <laughs> <laughs> and that typical countryside um, of this part of uh, Galicia. There is a, a very sobering moment. On, on this part of the Camino. And that's when you cross the bridge that's over the railroad tracks, which is where the accident the 24th of July, 2013 happened. That was on the eve of the celebration of the day of St. James, when the train left the tracks and killed over 100 people. That is still remembered to this day with mementos that are left in the, the screening on the sides of the and then you're entering Santiago. Santiago, World Heritage Site, we all know about that. The cathedral, new and clean. Yeah. <laughs> and just a reminder about why we're doing this. The Archbishop um, Julian Barrio Barrio, um, opening the Porta, the, the Porta Santa, Door of Forgiveness, at the back of the cathedral. Because this is, even though it's a prolongation, this is a holy year. If you do the rooftop tour of the cathedral, before you get outside, you'll be in a room where you may see this capital on top of a column. It's two women. One on the left with bread, one on the right with empanada. <laughs> Empanada. 
And at the end of the day, quemada. And that's what I have for you. Some of the uh, long runs on the Camino down through Andalusia, is there places to stop and stay? Nope. You just camp out? Or can you make your way through some of the smaller towns that may not actually go through it? Well, those, they, they don't have any of those either. Um, the, these are long, long stretches with no access to services unless you do the very, very modern thing and you call a taxi. <laughs> and okay. lots of people do that. Okay. Now, is that stretch up above Cordoba? It's after Cordoba. It's after Cordoba going on up. Going oh. on up. Yes. Okay, thank you. For sure. Anybody else? Please. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'm just wondering why is the number of people that are taking this route diminishing every year? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I wish I did. Um, I think it has a reputation of being difficult. Um, but I, I don't agree with that. Um, and it may be because there are the long stretches that are, don't have the services. It doesn't have the. It doesn't yet have the infrastructure like the Camino Frances. But um, I just don't know. I think it's a shame. Mm -hmm. 